Water scarcity is a pressing issue that many countries face in various forms, and mega projects to address it often come with astronomical costs. Such projects typically involve hundreds of miles of canals and intricate plumbing systems, and they are almost always carried out where they can be completed, at least theoretically. One of the places where these efforts are desperately needed is the Gaza Strip, where nearly every resident struggles to meet basic water needs every single day. Here, water is more precious than gold. But what makes the situation so dire is simple and terrifying. Gaza is plagued by constant warfare and an ongoing crisis. Can this strip of land facing such adversity do anything to resolve its water shortage? At first glance, the answer seems to be no, as the conditions here make finding drinking water nearly impossible. However, upon closer inspection, the Mediterranean Sea lies just next door, presenting an unexpected resource. So, what solutions have the people of Gaza devised to escape this relentless water crisis? The climate in Gaza is far from ideal. With only about six inches of rain per year, the region's rainy season spans just three months, January, February, and March. From mid-spring through autumn, rain becomes almost non-existent. The absence of natural lakes or large rivers to provide water exacerbates the problem. The only natural water system is the Wadi Gaza, a valley that fills with water during heavy rainfall, but this resource is unreliable and scarce when most needed. Compounding the issue, only a small fraction of the water from Wadi Gaza actually resides within Gaza's borders. Most of it flows into Israel, which diverts 5.2 billion gallons annually for agricultural use. As a result, Gaza only receives a minimal amount of water from this system. The coastal aquifer, which lies beneath Gaza, is the region's primary water source. Over 5,000 wells tap into this aquifer, providing water for the population, agriculture, and industry. However, with the annual extraction of 47 billion gallons, the aquifer's natural recharge rate of just 16 billion gallons per year is insufficient to replenish it. The result is a steadily decreasing water supply, and as the aquifer depletes, salt water from the Mediterranean Sea is seeping in, contaminating the freshwater. In fact, Groundwater salinity has risen to such an extent that 95% of the water exceeds the World Health Organization's recommended salt levels for drinking water. The situation is further complicated by waste disposal issues. Many residents still rely on pit latrines or septic tanks for wastewater, leading to contamination of the groundwater with harmful substances like nitrates. These contaminants make the water undrinkable and pose severe health risks, with 50% of children in Gaza suffering from waterborne diseases. In an effort to survive, many Palestinians turn to private water vendors, but the costs are exorbitant. In some cases, water purchased from these vendors can cost up to 30 times more than regular tap water. While some vendors may get water from wells, the water is just as polluted as the water from public sources. This means that most of the water sold is undrinkable, and families often spend their last savings in hopes of securing some water, only to end up with contaminated liquid that makes them sick. It's a dire situation, and the need for clean, accessible water is more urgent than ever. In response to this crisis, both local authorities and international organizations have worked tirelessly to find a solution. The answer, it turns out, lies in desalination. The Mediterranean Sea, while contaminating the aquifer with salt, also provides an abundant source of water, if it can be transformed into something drinkable. In 2017, the first desalination plant, using reverse osmosis technology, was opened in Deir al-Bala. Reverse osmosis is a process in which salty water is forced through a semi-permeable membrane under pressure, leaving the salt behind and making the water safe for drinking. The plant, built by UNICEF with support from the European Union, initially produced 1.6 million gallons of desalinated water per day, serving around 75,000 people in the southern part of the Gaza Strip, including the cities of Khan Yunus and Rafa. However, the plant faced significant challenges right from the start. Gaza's chronic electricity shortage became an issue, as the region relies on a single power station, which had been operating at reduced capacity since 2013, due to political and logistical issues. The power station struggled to meet the region's energy needs, leaving Gaza residents with only a few hours of electricity each day. To combat this, solar panels were installed on the desalination plant's roof, providing up to 12% of the energy needed to run the facility. Despite this, the plant still faced issues with capacity. By 2019, the goal of producing 5.2 million gallons of water per day had not been achieved, and the plant was only able to produce 3.7 million gallons daily. This, however, 
was enough to provide drinking water to 150,000 Palestinians. The cost of the plant's construction was modest at 20 million euros, small compared to similar projects in other parts of the world, but immensely valuable to Gaza's residents. Desalination technology offers an unexpected benefit. It helps make water consumption more efficient. The Palestinian Water Authority, in collaboration with UNICEF, launched a campaign to teach Gaza's residents how to properly store and handle desalinated water, emphasizing the importance of conservation and paying water bills. With the availability of desalinated water, many wealthier residents also saw an opportunity to profit by setting up smaller, private desalination units. While this can be seen as exploitative, these small units became a lifeline when the main plants were unable to meet demand. In addition to desalination, Gaza has been making strides in wastewater treatment. In the early 2020s, a new wastewater treatment plant was completed in Beige, providing much-needed sewage management for over a million people. This plant also generates enough electricity to power itself using biogas and solar energy. Another wastewater facility was built in Khan Yunus, where 430,000 residents now benefit from better sanitation and an additional source of water. Although it is unsuitable for drinking, it helps with irrigation in the agricultural sector. Unfortunately, despite these efforts, many of Gaza's desalination and purification plants are still not operating at full capacity, and some have been damaged in the ongoing conflict. Recent escalations have only worsened the situation, with Israel halting electricity supplies to Gaza and severely damaging water infrastructure. As a result, the desalination plant that once provided 3.7 million gallons of water per day may now only be able to produce 790,000 gallons, a catastrophic reduction. However, ingenuity and community resilience continue to shine through. Some Gaza residents have turned to solar energy, installing panels on their rooftops to pump water from wells, albeit often contaminated. One resident was able to supply 1,700 gallons of water daily to 1,000 people in need using a solar-powered system. While this solution is far from perfect, it demonstrates the resourcefulness of the people in Gaza in the face of overwhelming adversity. International aid has also played a role in alleviating the water crisis. In December 2024, the UAE delivered six desalination plants to Gaza, collectively producing 1.6 million gallons of water daily for 600,000 people. Oman also contributed, providing a small desalination unit with a capacity of 3,000 gallons per day, highlighting the importance of global solidarity in tackling this issue. While these efforts offer hope, the situation in Gaza remains fragile, and it is clear that long-term, sustainable solutions will only be possible when the region achieves lasting peace. Until then, the people of Gaza will continue to rely on creative solutions, international support, and their own resilience to survive amidst the ongoing water crisis.